I have no idea where I'm going to splice this in because this is actually all happening in real time, kind of on the fly. I was in the middle of editing the show and then took like a five minute break to just like scroll through Reddit. And I saw this post and I want to bring this up because I think there's a lot of things to talk about in here. Subject line. Well, let me say this first. I, I might just as like a let me preface this whole thing with that I'm about to do and say with I might need to make a new segment called Mad Online where I get really fired up over inconsequential stuff that does not matter and should not impact my day as much as it does. Okay. So without further ado, here's Matt online subject line, Monty. Here's the body. The team is suffering because he doesn't want to be here. He has a lot going on. This plays a part as to why we only have two wins. His passion for basketball is not there right now. Ivy's on the bench. Rotations are fucked. Cade is, I don't know what he is. This is a mess. He's overpaid, and we begged somebody to come here, and that doesn't sit right with me. I never felt it was the right move since it was announced. I just want this team to have the heart and mind of the bad boys and the going-to-work Pistons. At this point, we've been patient enough. Blow this shit up from the front office on down and build around Ivy, Asar, Duran, and Marcus Sasser. When I read that rotations are fucked, in, on November 13th, 2023, I know what that means. I know that that's coded for why isn't Jaden Ivey playing more games, more minutes? Because he was sick, first of all. Why wasn't he playing more before that? Something we're not privy to. But you know what I would say? The guy who is struggling to get minutes for whatever reason, the Bulls game didn't count. Again, he was sick. Like he's just, he's kind of getting back into, you know, the swing of things. That That is, that just is what it is. But that's the guy that they're going to build around? Really? You think? You don't think that's the guy that would be the first out the door? That that's the guy that Troy Weaver would first look at as like a, we could get something for you. Because I agree with you that if by the end of the season shit hasn't changed, then somebody's seat's going to be hot. I can tell you it's not going to be Monty Williams. You did not just make him the highest paid coach in the history of the NBA to fire him after one season. You're insane. And by the way, yeah, money was a factor. Money is, he had a lot of shit going on and he still does. That is totally true. The resources, the assets that Tom Gores as an owner made available to Monty Williams to make this job, this process as seamless and as easy on him as it could possibly be, it cannot be overstated. The contract can't be overstated. That was a huge factor. But the only person whose seat would get warm is Troy Weaver. And what that would entail is Tom Gores pressuring him into signing somebody or making a trade for somebody that Troy doesn't really want to do. Because we've already seen in the, you know, we talk about the coaching hiring. Monty isn't who I wanted to see. Who the fuck did you want to see get hired? Kevin Ollie, be fucking for real, dude. Like, I... Truthfully, I don't know. Maybe he would have been a good coach, but you don't know either. Like, we don't know. And we're 10 games into the season. Monty Williams is a coach of the year who's been to the NBA Finals. Like, yeah, he's going through some shit right now, but let's not, like, just say bullshit just for the sake of saying bullshit because the team stinks. If you are shocked that the team stinks, that's not an issue with anybody but yourself. And this isn't targeted at the guy who made the post on Reddit. This is just in general. This is a general sentiment because I've seen this take consistently, right? It's frustrating to me because we've been incredibly patient. But I think what gets lost on a lot of people is how young this team is and how fucking long this process can take if it's done the right way, which is what Troy has said consistently. And at the risk of sounding like a Troy Weaver apologist, which I might be, I'm teetering, I have been in the past, I haven't been in the past, I don't know, in this moment, maybe I am, because I think this is insane. We've seen, sorry, just I'm going to sidetrack, because I meant to say this point a second ago. In the last six months, there was this dichotomy in the front office between Troy and, well, ownership and Tom Gores on who we want to hire as a coach. Tom wanted the, the big swing. He wanted Monty Williams. Troy Weaver Sounded like he wanted Kevin Ollie. And the owner sets the precedent. That's consistent with Tom Gores. Remember Stan Van Gundy? 
Remember how that tenure went? What was that last big move that Stan Van Gundy made before he got fired? Is that the Blake Griffin trade? Who made him do that? Who was the owner that put a bullet in two different Andre Drummond trades because they were like boys? Is that Tom Gores? The guy is going to do whatever he wants, right? That's not going to involve firing Monty Williams. It could involve something drastic next offseason for sure. I don't want to be the guy who's like, well, the Pistons are only bad because of injuries. That's not true. <laughs> they're bad because they're bad. They're bad because they're young. But Monty Williams isn't the one that can't get to the free throw line. Monty Williams is not the one who's responsible for blowing a whistle when Cade gets clobbered when he goes to the hole. That's not him. Is Monty shooting threes out there? Is he the one dribbling off of his foot? Is that him? Oh. His passion's not there? What are you talking about? What do you think you mean by that, man? You and I aren't in the gym. Maybe it's not. But you and I aren't in the gym. The team being good is contingent on these players getting experience. Isaiah Stewart hasn't been in the league that long. Jalen Duran, we like to talk about this a lot, but people seem to forget in crucial moments like this when you need to critically think about shit, is 19. About to be 20. Has only been in the league for a year. Cade Cunningham has like barely played an NBA season if he's even played that yet in his career. He missed last year. Like you missed, talk about Portland, right? When you miss crucial development time so early in a rebuild, it extends the timeline and the time frame shifts down a couple years. It happens, man. We were in limbo as a team for so long, you know, trying to win 41 games, trying to crack 400. And if we were able to do that, it was our ceiling. And we could never even do that. Like, we could hardly do that. The last time we went to the playoffs, I don't even think we were 500. I think we were a game or two under. I might want to go back and look at that because if I'm wrong, that's embarrassing. But I don't think I am. I'm just as frustrated as everybody else. Like, believe me. But let's contextualize everything that we're saying and that we're thinking. I'm guilty of not doing it sometimes. Let's just try to think a little smarter. Computers now have primary control. Beautiful. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful. Primary control. Beautiful.